we're starting a series on MicroTik routers. These are a disruptive technology in that they provide features that are only available generally on the market as enterprise level features. So you've got to pay a lot of money to get these kinds of features. Well, these little guys from MicroTik are able to do it a lot cheaper. We're talking about 10% of the price. So it is a great thing and it allows us to create a better home network, a better office network, perfect for SMBs or self-employed people. Um, so if that is you or if you just want to make your home network as good as can possibly be, well, this series is for you. We're going to take you through. I'm going to take you through um, everything from the basic setup today all the way to creating a guest Wi-Fi network that is going to allow your kids' friends to use the Wi-Fi without actually risking the integrity of your personal data. There's a lot that we can do with a MicroTik router and we're going to help you through that throughout the course of this series. The series is available at cat5.tv slash microtick, so make sure you go there and you're going to see each of the videos plus the hardware that is going to be required. Speaking of hardware, now I have opted for the Microtik HAP AC router board RB962UIGS, and the reason that I've opted for this particular model is, uh, well, there's a few different things. Essentially, it has gigabit Ethernet. Now, my internet here at the studio is gigabit internet. So if I had a router that only did 10 over 100, I'm going to actually only be getting 100 megabits per second on my internet service, even though it's capable of so much more. So I absolutely needed to ensure that my router is going to support the gigabit ethernet um, so that uh, and the gigabit internet so that I'm not um, losing some of the speed of my internet connectivity. That's very, very important. Second uh, to that, is the fact that it has a dual radio, so 2.4 and 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi. So I can put my cameras on 2.4 gigahertz, which is a pretty oversaturated band. Uh, but at the same time, I can have 5 gigahertz for my phone and my other devices so that I've got better speed, better connectivity, and uh, it's going to work really, really well. It supports 802.11b, G, and N Wi-Fi capability, all from within this little device that is not going to cost us a whole lot of money. You can find out more about the product line. Go to our website, cat5.tv slash microtick and follow the link. And that's going to take you to uh, an index. So what is interesting, I should say, I've already kind of covered this in the introductory video a couple weeks back. Uh, but um, just to be clear, what is neat about MicroTik is that it is not limited by software. So the firmware of the router does not restrict you in the same way that uh, a, tr a traditional consumer router would. Um, typically, you have to pay more for more features. Well, MicroTik and their router board OS, um, it, they, it is completely wide open as far as feature set goes. So the only consideration as you buy a MicroTik device is what is the hardware going to do for you. So you need to make sure that it's that the device that you're buying is going to meet your needs. Is this the right device for you? I don't know. You may be able to get away with a, a lesser one, something a little smaller or a little bit, uh, a little less expensive. Um, and, and you can go through the list of their hardware and figure out which one is right for you. But keep in mind the software that runs it from the very cheapest $30, $40 router that Microtech makes all the way up to the very most beautiful rack mountable $600 unit, the software, the firmware, the capabilities of the programming are completely the same. So the only limitation is based on hardware. So you can start off with something really cheap and work your way up. Later you can upgrade if you need something better. That's pretty cool. So again, cat5.tv slash microtick. The now all that, all that I've done is plugged in the power so far, but what we need to do first and foremost is I need to bridge my internet modem. So my internet service provider has provided um, an internet modem that allows me connectivity. But that modem has a DHCP server, it has a firewall, and it's basically allowing my computers to communicate to the internet. Well, I'm going to replace that built-in firewall and that built-in router with uh, and the DHCP server with my MicroTik. So 
I need to do what's called a bridge. So the modem uh, that my ISP provides, mine is a Hytron modem, um, I, I need to set it so that it is nothing but a modem. And then we're going to use this device to control it. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to log into the interface and the Hytron modems or CUS admin is the login. Your modem is going to be different, um, so do keep that in mind. Um, it's going to be the IP address of your gateway. You can find out more by um, contacting your ISP if you're not sure how to do that. But just ask them, hey, how do I bridge my modem? That's the important thing. So it is just going to be a dumb modem that gives my Microtik access to the internet. So on the Hytron, I'm going to go into basic and then gateway function. And residential gateway function is enabled by default. I want to simply disable that. Now keep in mind, as soon as I say OK, I'm going to lose access to the internet once I hit save changes. So let's do it. Um, because now I have turned that into a dumb modem. So let's grab an ethernet cable and let's, uh, let's uplink our router board. So the router board port number one, I'm going to set as my WAN port. So I'm going to connect that into my network. Just get this out of the way. This is a little bit rickety because uh, I'm doing this, you know, um, pretty makeshift, but you're going to get the idea. Uh, basically, port number one from the router board is going to come out to my, my modem. So I'm going to plug that in to my modem here. There we go. Connected and good. Let's see. Yeah, doesn't seem to matter which port I go in. I'm going to just jam that in there. There we go. And now I'm going to take the, the cable that was uplinking me to the network, and I'm going to plug this into port number two on my router board, and that's going to give me access to the Microtik. I say router board, Microtik is the brand, router board is the product. So my network, which is my switch, is now connected to port number two. So my computer is basically seeing port number two. Port number one on the Microtik is going into the back of the actual ISP modem, which is now set to bridged mode. So let's jump over to our Microtik. Uh, first of all, we need to see what's... Now, one thing you're going to notice is that I am at 10.0.0.1 originally. I need to find out what my new network is now that I am on the Microtik. IP config slash all. So this is uh, in Windows. In Linux, you're going to type IP space dash A. And let's find out what kind of networking I've got here. Uh, okay, I'm still seeing a default gateway of 10.0.0.1. Let's see. So it has not refreshed yet. So let's check. So I'm on Windows 10, and even though a reboot could um, trigger um, basically fixing your network by trying to reconnect, all I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on my Ethernet adapter and disconnect, disable the Ethernet adapter, and re-enable it. And now, once it reconnects, I should be able to do an IP config slash all and should see... Yes! Okay, so we now are on 192.168.88. Dot one. So let's try that. 192.168.88.1. And there we are with router OS. So in router OS, first thing we now this is the quick set. So this is allowing us to quickly set up our Microtik um, router device. So let's see what's happening here. So DHCP server range, I want to change that to 10.0.0.100. To 10.0.0.254. Now you may not need to do that because you may be using 192.168. Whatever. Um, I need to. I here at the studio. I use the 10.0.0.100 block. So that is general networking and not really what I'm setting out to do here um, and and teach you. But essentially, that's my IP block. If you're happy with 192.168.88.1, that's fine. Uh, I'm doing 10.0.0.1 as the IP address for my router. 
and setting the DHCP server range accordingly from 100 to 254. All right, so anything else that I need to set here, I can set up my wireless and everything else. I'm gonna do that um, in a little bit. So let's just get our IP address working here. So I'm gonna hit apply configuration. Notice the address acquisition is grabbing from ethernet port number one. That's why I plugged my modem in there and I've set it to automatically get the IP address. So let's see what happens here as, uh, as I apply that configuration. So we should see that that router is going to restart itself. And when it does, we're gonna be on a 10.0.0 network. Cheap and cheerful solution. All right, 10.0.0.1. Yeah, there it is. All right, so it was that easy to, to get everything set up. Okay, so let's, uh, let's renew our DHCP from, this is our internet connection. <clears throat> and let's see what it's given us. Let's release and renew. Make sure, yes, we are on ethernet port number one. I do not have a live indicator light, so something Ah, my cable wasn't plugged in all the way. <laughs> that is thing number two to do. So do you see how that just popped right in? Boom! I am live on the internet. So now I should already have access to, say, Google. Yes, I am online. Let's do a quick speed test. Let's see how she's doing. Go, go, go. So that was a pretty miserable download speed. Upload speed, not terrible. Test again, something's up there. Maybe we're just in that, uh, you know, that pandemic uh, internet speed. Everything is pretty slow right now. Yeah, getting pretty low speeds. So. Even still, a 10 over 100 router would only give me up to 100 megabits, and I'm pushing 156 right now. That's pretty bad considering I'm supposed to have a gig, but it, at least I know that um, I'm getting better than 100 megabits a second. So there we go. Everything looks pretty well set. Let's jump into WebFig. Now, this is what makes the MicroTik so very powerful. This is the software which you will get lost if you try to find your way through here. And note that that's as quick as it was to get everything up and running, but I am going to need to set up things like under IP, I can set up uh, DHCP um, uh, reservations. So as my devices connect, I can actually set these up as uh, static devices. You'll notice it's counting backwards, so my computer actually got 254. So it's actually starting at the high end of the DHCP pool and working its way down, which is fine. If I wanted to, I could make that static by simply clicking on Make Static. Again, I'm in IP DHCP server. I've single clicked on my computer and I can click on Make Static. I'm not gonna do that, but I will need to do that with things like my server when I bring those online. So that is really like really cheap and cheerful, quick setup of my network. Now let's actually get Wi-Fi up and running. So Wi-Fi is pretty straightforward. I'm going to add a Wi-Fi password of dum dum one two three. Don't actually do that. I'm doing that for the sake of the demonstration. Uh, okay, so network name on two gigahertz. I can leave it as is, or I can say cat five TV two point. Uh, I guess I can't. I'm not sure if I can have a point in there or not. I'll go cat5 TV and then for five gigahertz I'll go cat5 TV five gigahertz. Yeah. All right. So see the options here. B, G, B, G, N, B, G, N, G, N. And then we've got A, N, A, N, A, N, A, C, only A, C, and N with A, C. 
There's my password. Okay, so looks good. Apply that configuration. Now, one of the things that's really, really neat about this, okay, first of all, you notice I'm not having to reboot my router every time. And notice I'm starting to pick up some Wi-Fi um, connectivity here. Um, I, I don't have to reboot every time I change the configuration. And when I create any kind of config, it's instantaneous. So, but what is cool about Webfig, this web interface, so notice I'm accessing this through the IP address of the router, um, is that if I were to brick my microtick and I don't want to lose the settings that I've created, presumably you've backed them up because you can within Webfig, that's part of the system. Um, so if I jump into, uh, do, do, I want to say it's in system, system, uh, do, do, reset, reboot, port. See how vast this is? I will find and cover backing up your microtech. <laughs> oh, there's a sup out dot riff file. So that will do it. Um, <clears throat> but if you were to cause a problem that would not, that would make it so that you cannot log into this, microtech provides a piece of software, so I've just logged out, and you can download and install Winbox. Winbox is a Windows application, it's also available for Mac, and it gives you the interface. It basically detects your router on the network, and it gives you the same interface uh, with a little more uh, functionality like micro uh, multitasking. Um, but even if you cannot get into the web interface, you can use Winbox. Uh, I say it's a Windows application. You can download it and run it in Wine on your Linux box. So do not be concerned about that. Notice I can log in with no password. So I want to go into Quick Set and just set myself a password on my router. Dum dum one two three. Dum dum one two three. And apply that config. And so now if I log out and try to log in again, it's going to say authentication failed. So I'm going to try dum dum one two three enter. Make sure you use smart passwords, okay, folks. Um, best way to do that is use a tool like like uh, LastPass and generate a secure password, okay. Grab that, make that your password, and uh, and then use LastPass or whatever password manager you're using in order to memorize it, and that's going to keep you a lot safer. Um, of course, the interface is only accessible within my network, so it can be something that's familiar to you as well. So that is, uh, so we've got Wi-Fi working, presumably. So let's see if I bring up my phone here and drag down. Let's bring up our Wi-Fi networks. And you will see Cat5 TV 5 gigahertz is there and ready for me to connect. I'm going to try it. Connect to it and type dum dum one two three connect and obtaining IP address and I'm in done and it's detected cat5 TV the two gigahertz as well uh, and I'm connected so now if I go IP and then DHCP server and go into my leases you'll see that there's a new device that's my phone so I can make that static and I can uh, and notice that is the poco phone poco phone f1 Robbie so it's as quick as that to pick things up be able to configure it and literally we we just set up our internet and got up and running in a matter of minutes what are we going to do for the rest of the show folks what are we going to do so check out cat5.tv slash microtick these devices are affordable they are powerful we're going to learn all kinds of amazing things that we can do with this it's so much better than the built-in firewall and protection that comes with your ISP's modem. It removes the ISP's ability to be able to connect in and access your network. That's important. Think about that for a second. When you install a, a modem from your ISP, your internet service provider, they have access to that. Remember when I bridged it? That made them lose access to it. Now, the only device that they can see if they're trying to track 
is the, the micro tick. They cannot access it. However, they might be able to see just that there is a device connected. I could connect another 100 computers. They would still only see one device connected. So it gives you a fair amount of privacy uh, against the ISP snooping as well. And that said, it's giving you a huge amount of privacy against script kitties and hackers and everything else. But at the same time, we're going to be able to create a safer network within our internal infrastructure, which is going to be fantastic. I mean, it's so nice to be able to give out a Wi-Fi password to your friends and family as they come and visit, um, but you don't want them to have access to the files on your server, to your printer, to uh, using all your bandwidth as you're trying to you're trying to do something online and something's weird, it's running so slow, well, little did you know that somebody who you gave your Wi-Fi access to is downloading a movie from next door, right? So these are things that we're going to be able to prevent with our Microtech. So check out the series, cat5.tv slash Microtech. It's going to be amazing and we're up and running. I'm going to put this in the rack and uh, I'm excited because this is a way better solution for my network. Thank you.